What's up, everybody? Welcome into our first look at a new trial that a ton of you have requested, and that is Memphis rapper Young Dolph. His life was taken, and two men have been charged with conspiracy to commit that crime. In some pretty wild parts of this trial already, and we're only a couple days in, there is a video of the shooting, the entirety of it. But of course, they have COVID masks on, they drive up, they jump out, they jump in, and they leave. We're going to watch that video. Additionally, I said there were two people, two co-defendants involved. Well, one of them has flipped and is testifying in this trial as the star witness for the prosecution against Mr. Jefferson, the man on trial that we're going to be looking into today and following if you guys are interested in it. If you're interested in continuing to follow this case, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. But we're going to jump into opening statements and that star witness's testimony, among other things, in today's video starting now. So just to give you an idea of what exactly this CCTV video looks like, um, I have it up on the screen so that um, you can kind of get a visual of what we're looking at while I explain kind of what happened in opening statements, how they're setting up this trial, what the arguments are, what the motive is. All of that is seemingly lining up and in place. So it's going to be really interesting to see how defense attorneys attack this, how defense attorneys poke holes, how they're going to get into a situation where they feel like they can explain that it wasn't their guy. Um, and there's a lot of evidence, but there are some arguments on the other side as per usual. So the state starts opening statements, uh, focusing on the victim, young Dolph and how he tried to do a lot for his community he rapped about some things that might not be the best. And it's really interesting. So many of these rapper trials, um, whether it's Rico gang activity, whether it's taking of lives, stealing drugs, this one has a lot of the uh, similar factual scenarios, but it's really just this one-off crime that they're prosecuting today. But you'll see in here throughout this trial, if you're watching so many different aspects, record labels agents and people getting paid depending on what rappers end up at what record labels, um, getting deals, putting hits out on people, activity to show your muscle or your power. This case has all of that. And Young Dolph was known by some of the people in the rough parts of town that connect young men who are rappers with certain labels and they get a piece. He went the other way, didn't go with these rappers. Um, and so some rap group put a hit out on young Dolph. Uh, some people believe it's connected to Yo Gotti and there's going to be some evidence and testimony about that potentially. Um, but as we look through and, um, listen, the important parts are the motive to the two men that have been charged with this crime is that hit is the money is the bounty of 100,000 dollars. Uh, the state argues these are not professional hitmen, um, and that purely they were just doing this for the money. And in fact, they were out on the streets and this money was probably to, um, fix some of their habits. So the state plays in opening this video and the taller, I think he's tall. He looks tall in the video, but with the yellow shirt on is young Dolph. That's his Corvette. They stop by the store and this video watches them go in. I'm just going to keep the sound off and just kind of show what the video um, shows. So they walk in. That's him in the yellow and his brother. His brother here is in the black shirt following behind with the long hair. Uh, young Dolph's brother, I should say. And he'll become a main component because it's kind of one of the reasons that is the indicating factor of the defendants that we find out. So the defendants pull up in this white Mercedes. You can see a semi-automatic type of weapon, COVID masks, hoodie on, gray sweatpants. So this first person is Cornelius Smith. And the reason I know that and feel confident saying it is because Cornelius Smith is the co-defendant that has flipped. He has taken the stand. He has identified himself in this video. And then there's a second person, the driver of the white Mercedes. That is, according to Cornelius Smith, Justin Johnson. 
who is the defendant that is on trial currently. And is he just a co-conspirator and the getaway driver? Well, no. You'll see in this video, Justin Smith, I'm sorry, Justin Johnson, gets out of the white Mercedes with a firearm and fires shots into this business where young Dolph and his brother are. So Cornelius Smith is the one firing more shots. He's there early. He starts the shooting before Justin Johnson even gets out of the car. But eventually Justin Johnson does join him, firing shots, taking the life of young Dolph. Now, as you can see, COVID masks can't for sure pick out and identify who it is from this video. But this is all according to Cornelius Smith's testimony, which we're going to listen to today. Then you see young Dolph's brother run out with a firearm of his own and fire shots into the white Mercedes and at the two defendants. He also will go into young Dolph's car and get a larger weapon and fire shots into the white Mercedes. And we find out from Cornelius Smith that he was shot by young Dolph's brother and had to get medical care and wound kit care. And more of that's coming later, but also that Justin Johnson was grazed by a bullet from young Dolph's brother. And the state lays out how they're going to submit all the evidence and it's 2021. It's not 2001. So they have all sorts of video corroborating evidence and we're going to see some of that. And they have, um, cell phone data and text messages and videos and elevators of the co-defendants packing a bag and getting out of Dodge because the heat was up and they're going to present that to us. And they have all sorts of videos and technological evidence, but Something they keep saying is that everything was wiped down. Everything was wiped down. Letting you know that there might be some issues and some gaps. And that leads us to the defense's opening. And they flat out say Justin Johnson didn't do it. That's not him in the video. And they talk about, oh, there's this other guy who is the one that apparently told these two hitmen about the bounty. He's an old head. And Justin Johnson, the defendant, is also a rapper. And this old head was trying to push Justin Johnson to a certain label so he could get a cut. Justin Johnson was going the other way. And that's why they're pinning this on Justin Johnson. And that's his theory. This is a setup. Justin Johnson is not one of the two men in this video. Okay. He's obviously talking about how he's going to hit the credibility of Cornelius Smith, the admitted person involved here and shooter here. And how he's biased for all sorts of reasons, but it's not Justin Smith, even though he's going to try to point the finger at Justin Smith. And they're also going to talk about how there are no fingerprints on the car. And there are all sorts of gaps in the state's evidence. And that's the defense's story, that it just wasn't Justin Smith, but all this is being pinned on him because he wasn't going the way that was going to make other people money. I keep saying Justin Smith, Justin Johnson, Cornelius Smith. Those are the two defendants. So we're going to jump to the star witness for the state. And we're going to get to watch what exactly it looks like. And I'm sure there's all sorts of safety reasons for them not showing faces of multiple uh, witnesses, including Cornelius Smith, who's currently incarcerated. Um, but he's not on trial today. Justin Johnson is. And he introduces himself to start as Cornelius Smith. And we're going to get into, he admits, you know, his part in this and that he knows he's facing a lot of jail time. We're going to listen to him explain exactly what happened that day. Fill all the gaps, tell the entire story. And it's very common when co-defendants that are also not the best people in the world, even admittedly from Cornelius Smith's perspective, are the star witnesses for the state because the defense is going to have a lot of fodder for cross-examination. You're a bad guy. You're a liar. You're a shooter. And so you can poke holes. The problem is, how effective is that? What does he have to gain, really, compared to what he has to lose? He's going to get less time, but is he going to get no time? And the defense has some very good impeachment material that we're going to get to. But before we do, we're going to get to watch something you don't always see, and that's somebody flipping, a co-defendant flipping, admitting their part and snitching on the other person. And from my perspective... His credibility is this trial. They have the medical examiner and other people testify. Yes, this was him. He was there. They did this. This is how the person died. Gunshot wounds, things like that. 
And we'll probably look at other witnesses, of course, if you guys want to, and you hit the like button, let me know in the comments. Maybe even let me know what witnesses you want to look into. But the, the entire trial, in my opinion, pretty much rests on Cornelius Smith. That's why we're going to focus on his testimony today. And at the end of his testimony, I want you to let me know in the comments if you believe him, because you guys are prospective jurors and potential jurors in the jurisdiction and community in which you live. You could be sitting on this jury if you lived in this community in Tennessee. And a jury's job is to judge the credibility of witnesses. Do they believe them? Do they not? Do they believe the facts that they're testifying to are true? They are the finder of facts, meaning the jurors. So I want to know what you guys think. Do you find him credible? Doesn't mean he's a perfect person. Doesn't mean he didn't tell any lies. Doesn't mean he's not even lying on the stand today. But do you believe overall the important big facts that he's testifying to? That's the big question here as we listen. And that's what I want you to think about as we listen to his testimony. Whoops, I have the sound off. Let's see if closed caption. All right, here we go. You started hanging back in your neighborhood? Uh, yes, sir. Start hanging around a lot, of, a lot of old friends. All right. Some of those old friends trouble? We all trouble. By the way, not the best audio, but we're going to do our best, even with kind of the crumbly audio, to make out everything we can. So yeah, he's even admitting... They're all trouble, including him. He knows people are going to hit his credibility. He gets it. But now he found a conscience to do the right thing. I mean, we all know he's trying to get a deal, but it is what it is. doesn't mean he's lying, but it doesn't mean he's biased. I'm going to say that we are in trouble. And I'm looking here, uh, Cornelius, at your criminal record. You were convicted of aggravated assault in 2011. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Convicted of misdemeanor drugs in 2014. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, 2012. 12. Case started. He's getting the bruises done in the apple first. Right up front, you're trouble. You're a bad guy. You're, you've committed crime. Just get all that out of the way before we get to the important testimony. 2011 and ended in 2012. Yes, sir. As misdemeanor drugs. Yes, sir. And then resisting official detention in 2014. Yes, sir. That's same Cornelius Smith. Yes, sir. And you're presently charged in this case with conspiracy to commit murder and with, with murder. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, and you have an attorney in this case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, is he in the courtroom? Can get out of your yes, way? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, what promises have I made to you with regard to your testimony today? So we've gotten that, you know, your bad stuff out of the way. Now, what promises? How biased are you? Why are you doing this? No. no Just in case you guys are wondering how prosecutors do this, no promises made before they testify, but it's like, depending on how you do, we'll see. Just tell the truth. Make sure you tell the truth. There are always deals to be made on the back end, especially if you do tell the truth, defendant gets convicted, you did your job, you'll get a deal at the end. The defense attorney is going to get into that, but the prosecutors always like to start with, we didn't make any promises. You're just here telling the truth and we've just told you to tell the truth. That's what's happening here. And it's, I, I like watching it and for you guys being able to see exactly how it works. How do you deal with a difficult star witness? Well, this prosecutor decided to hit all of his crimes and all of his issues up front, hit the fact that he is testifying just to tell the truth that we didn't make any, him any promises. Then we're going to get into the whole story of what happened that day and after. Well, I told you that you're not going to testify and walk out of here. Yes, you told me that. Do you know that you're going to prison? Yes, sir. Have I told you that it's very important, though, for you to tell the truth? Yes, sir. I told you it's important to tell the truth because I said so? Yes, sir. And because the judge will evaluate whether or not you told the truth? Right. And have I told you it's in your best interest to tell the truth? Yes, sir. Are you here to tell the truth? Yes, sir. I want to skip. So he is here to tell the truth. That's all the prosecutor expects and wants from this witness. Uh, they talk about, you know, how in the beginning he didn't necessarily want to cooperate with law enforcement, said it wasn't him. Defense is going to hit on that. Um, and the fact that he just 
you can see the counterpoint to a lot of this. So everything the prosecutor is going to say, the defense has a counterpoint. Defense is going to say, you are getting a deal. You are biased. You're a bad guy and a liar. So why should we believe anything you say today? Exactly the inverse of what the prosecutors say. Prosecutor talks about how at first you didn't want to cooperate. Then you want to do the right thing. And you did. You got a letter and you decided to cooperate because it made no sense anymore because you knew you were found out. The defense is going to say, at first you were telling the truth that it wasn't my client in the video. Now you flipped and you're lying because you're trying to cover your own butt. Um, but we're going to jump to when he actually discusses what happen the day of the shooting. And a lot of it, of course, has to do with the video. And he is literally, as the witness who was there in this video, going to walk through, identify everybody in the video, explain to us exactly what happened. And I got to be honest, if the jury believes him, I don't see how you recover from this. But is the jury going to believe him? Do you guys believe him? I went down, sure. If the record could reflect that he's identified the defendant, Mr. Justin Johnson, you know? Let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant in court. So how did you get to be with Justin Johnson this day on November 17th, 2021? Uh, we, we knew that, you know, they had a hit on a uh, document head or whatever, so. Who had a hit on whose head? Big Jug had, had a hit on Dog head or whatnot, so. How do you know that Big Jug had a hit on Dog's head? I could quit had told me about it. How much money was it supposed to be? Hundred thousand on Dolby. And had you agreed to do this hit? Yes, sir. Had Justin agreed to do this hit? Yes, sir. We all going to do it together? Yeah, they they been on it, but yeah. What was was there any arrangements as far as splitting money or anything? Yeah, uh, me and him and uh, we me and him supposed to be giving quite ten thousand piece. All right, so you and him were going to get a co van, 10,000 a piece. And how much were you going to get? I was getting 40, he was getting 40. Okay. And I believe if the guy that they were going to give 10,000 a piece for this hit, let them know about it. And that's also the guy connecting people with record labels, trying to connect Justin with a record label, according to the defense. I believe it's all the same guy. There are a lot of nicknames. I knew nothing about this trial coming into it, nothing about this story. It's so sad how often things like this seem to be happening. Um, and, and we're seeing so many trials with similar lives being taken and horrible things being done all in the name of, you know, money, power, rap labels, and just all this horrible stuff going on in the background. And especially a lot of stuff happening to rappers and, and young guys that are coming up trying to do good once they get there. And a lot of bad is done before they get there too. And that's really sad too. It's just, we're learning a lot about the problems and sadness that happen to a lot of people in our country, just period. Um, but you're not going to hear me be overly confident about who exactly said or did what with all these nicknames and what, but we're going to listen to it together. And, and that's why we like to hear it from the horse's mouth in court. And we kind of come up with our interpretation, similar to the way the jury's doing. They're just listening to it too. Nobody's really explaining it to them outside of opening statement and closing argument. Um, had you spoken with Justin about this? Yeah, we had, we had been talked about it. Okay. This was not something that just happened this day, but something that was in the process for weeks. How did y'all hook up this day? If you remember, he had pulled up to get me. He came and got me or whatever. Where did he get you from? He got me from my father's house. Where's your father's house? Upper Lamont, Seen, Orange Mound area. He had. Either you called him or he called you or anything like this? He called me the first time I missed the call. He called me back. I answered. He was telling me basically they were pulling up because we already knew what was going on. You already, when you say you already knew what was going on, you already knew that this was about? Yeah, because we knew they were doing the turkey drive, so we was actually on our way to Westwood. Had you and Justin talked about this particular day before? Like, Nah, that was sick daylight. We just knew that it would turn the drag on every day that we okay. You knew that the fair said you knew Dolph was involved in these turkey drives this week before Thanksgiving. Yeah, we didn't know we were gonna catch him, but we knew he did his artist. You know, everybody had a hit on him. Everybody had a price on him. From Joe? Yeah, from Joe. And that was gonna be all business this week. When he arrived at the house, do you remember what he was driving? 
uh, white Mercedes Benz. Okay, have you, had you seen that car before? No, nah, I ain't never saw that car. Did you get the car with them? Yeah, I got him. Was well, there anybody else in the car? No, nah, it was just me and Jessica. Uh, were there any guns in the car? Yeah, they was on a big seat in the bed. Do you remember what kind of guns they were? A Draco handgun. Okay, and Draco, Memphis, some type of bigger semi-automatic weapon, is that right? <coughs> and then a handgun? Do you remember what you were uh, wearing that day? I had on some gray sweet pants, orange and white, uh, Jordan wall, and a blue gap hood. A blue gap hoodie? With a do-rag on. With a do-rag on. Did y'all have uh, did y'all have gloves? I had my own gloves. You had your own gloves? When you when you got in the car, did you have your gloves on? No, I ain't have uh, You said Justin had his own gloves? Yeah. Another reason they're trying to explain, you know, what they're wearing, how we know it's them, how we can identify that it's Justin, because that's a big thing. We have the video. But how can we identify as Justin? And they have quite a bit. Um, and the gloves to try to explain the no fingerprints, the cleaning of the cars coming later. Um, so that's why they're setting up all these details. And by the way, you give enough details, it usually builds credibility. Yeah, it goes on. It's black gloves. He had his, his black gloves on before he picked you up? Yeah. Uh, does he get out of his car and pick you up, or do you go up to the car? Nah, no, I, I, got, I got out of the house, came out of the house, uh, got on in the car. Okay. Off to do the mission. It do, do a mission, try to catch somebody. Try to catch one of the rappers? Yeah, one of them. At the Turkey Drive near Westwood? In Westwood, yeah. All right. What happens if y'all get in the car? Oh, we went back on Bradley Street. He got some out of, uh, I think they were like a uh, expedition truck that he had parked on Bradley Street. And then we took the back street. We was at Lamont Airways. We had the light. So we picked up, let me get this right. He picks you up in the Mercedes, is that right? Yeah. Uh, but you go to Bradley Street. Yeah. And is there an expedition already there? Yeah, expedition already there. Parked in the yard. Do you know who parked that expedition there? I guess he did. Okay, well, that, we're, not, we're not allowed to guess in here. Ah, well, okay. so nah, was I there. didn't see him parking, though. Okay. Uh, and what color was it? White. A white expedition. Yeah, white. All right. uh, did y'all do anything when y'all went to Bradley Street at that point? He got some at the truck. And then jump back in the car. I got you. So he gets out of the Mercedes of Bradley Street, goes into the expedition and gets something. Yeah. And comes back. Okay. Do you know what he got? Nah, I don't know. Uh, are y'all talking at this point? Nah, we we weren't talking. Like, cause he was on the phone at first, then he hung it up. But we weren't talking about it. We weren't talking about it. Okay. Now, y'all were cool with each other, is that right? You and Justin? Nah. Okay. He gets back in the white Mercedes? Yeah, he gets back in the white Mercedes. And we take the back street and get you and stuff to uh, we at Lamar and Airway. Now, if we're going to try to make some arguments for the defense, if Cornelius Smith was the other guy in the video and it was a different driver and not Justin Johnson, he would still be able to explain all this. He would still know all these details. He would still know exactly what happened that day because he was there. But instead of whoever was really with him that he's trying to protect and pin it on Justin, he's just going to put Justin in that chair instead of the other guy. Is that true? I don't know, but that will be the other side of sure. Of course he knows all these details because he was there. Justin doesn't because he wasn't there. We finna get on Spreadway, going to a Spreadway. Okay. Bradley to Dedrick, is that what you said? Yeah. And then y'all are going to get on the expressway. Yeah, we finna get on Spreadway on Airways. Okay. But when, and this is Airways that we see. Yeah, it's Airways. Okay. Uh, what happens once y'all get to Airways? We hit the light. How'd you know? How'd y'all know it was dog? Everybody know, you know, how you call you, you know, on the tea cars and stuff. Yeah, people in Memphis knew about that rap, right? Yeah. That camouflage white and green and blue rap. Yeah. That surprised you? Everybody knew who Dolph was because the rap on his Corvette, which you saw in the video. See him like that? Yeah. Did you say anything or did Justin say anything? He was like, give old dog right now. All right, what did y'all do? We received the trip. Received right. the trip. So y'all are following him on airways? 
Yeah, you right over, right over the street. And you saw the first part of this video, didn't you? Did you see him pull off here to the cookie store? Yeah, he pulled in the cookie store. And what'd y'all do? We made the block. We made the block. Came with the bad boy. Came with the bad boy. I jumped out. We started shooting. All right. Well, let's back up here, though. We saw him pull off of the airways <clears throat> to here. Is that right? Yeah. Y'all, can you see my little pointer? Yeah. Y'all would be traveling this direction on airways, is that right? right. Then did y'all do a crazy U-turn or anything, or what y'all nah, do? No, nah, no, nah. we came, we came with the big street. We okay. The big street. Following the clickers, is what y'all did? Yeah. Okay. We went it's wild that he's like, yeah, we were just driving, then all of a sudden, you know, we saw him, we were like, okay, let's just do it right now, and they just did it like that. I mean, it's wild to think what goes through some people's heads um, before they do things. It's not even like they were lying in wait and planning, and it was going to be this day, and we knew he was going to be here. Went to the light, made the loop around. Did you see him get out of his car like this? No, nah, I ain't seen him get out of the car. Say y'all. Yeah, there's a right there. Stop it here. It's me. Do something. We're gonna back up. I'm not wanted to yeah, back up a little bit. All right. First guy out of the car, who's that? It's me. That's you? Which one of the guns do you have? I got the little trickle stab on. Okay, that's that semi automatic weapon, is that right? Yeah. You ever shot that thing before? I know shot. No. Okay. You can proceed, Irish. That's your gap hoodie, is that right? Yeah. That's you who you're shooting at? No, no. Alright, now back it up again, uh, Miss Iris if you would. Back it up for Justin getting out of the car. Let's back it up for Justin to get out of the car. Allegedly, Justin getting out of the car. All right, who's the second person here? The guy on the driver's side. It just. He's got the uh, smaller handgun. Is that right? Yeah, bad, bad, bad baseball. Hey, bad pro baseball. You're firing this crazy thing. What you see? What are you feeling? He says, well, you're firing this thing. What are you feeling? He said, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't feeling anything at the time. So again, bad dude, bad dude here testifying. State's not hiding behind it. They know he's a bad dude. They got him too. He's going to go to prison, but he's telling the truth. That's what the state's saying. That's their story. They're sticking to it. And again, what else do you do in a situation like this where you have two co-defendants doing this horrible thing? If one of them wants to come on your side and tell the truth, you take them, warts and all. And you don't try to hide behind those warts. You make sure he admits to them and you, nobody try to pretend like this is a good guy here. Not the state. They're not trying to pretend like this is a good guy either. This is how you develop somebody who flips. This is how you develop a co-defendant that's willing to testify against his other co-defendant because that's how you get both of them. Out to you. You know, trying to get some money. Trying to get some money. Bet you probably would have wasted on oxycodone and ecstasy. Just like you probably would about drugs with it, right? This prosecutor, I like the way he handled this witness. Honestly, he's like, you committed all these crimes. You lied to the cops. You you think you feel nothing when you take this young man's life. You were probably just gonna go waste it on drugs. Tell us what happened, dude. It's like just just tell us what happened. I'm not gonna pretend like we're friends up here. You shot that gun a bunch. Right in there. Right in there. 
Yeah, I'm going to tell you how many times I shot. Out. Aiming for dog? Oh, I aimed for dog. Was he able to uh, say anything, y'all, or is he able to run or get away at all? I shot through the glass, so I went close up on him. I was shooting through the glass. Okay. I saw him standing by the window. I just got out of the star shooting. All right. I can proceed until Justin shoots. There with the handgun. Who's that? Just. All right. You proceed. All right. You stop right here. This is Dolph's brother, Marcus. Did you know that he shot back at y'all? I ain't noticed until we pulled up. It was a bullet hole in my side window. And oh, I told Jesse, I'm crying, I'm heat. He was like, I'm heat too. So I see, I'm heat right on my leg. And I see a bullet hole in my sweater. I said, damn, I'm heat. So we driving out, he was saying he was heat. I'm talking to him, making sure we on Rick, making sure he's straight. I'm like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm straight, I'm straight. Bullet head wing in my arm. It was a bullet in my back. Let's. I want to back up. Uh, you and Justin here are running to the white Mercedes. Is that right? All right. You get in what side of the car? I get on the passenger side. And Justin gets back in the driver's side. Yeah, he get back in the driver's side. Y'all get in the car. And you can watch the rest of the, of the video here. Did y'all see Marcus getting the second gun from his car? No, nah, um, but when we pulled out and, and I knew we were shot back, I would finish you back, but there were too many cars coming and I didn't just want to beat no anybody, so I didn't shoot back. Because Marcus was shooting at y'all as y'all were leaving from down here, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and you would be in the car at this point? Yeah, we was in the car. Looking backwards? Yeah, I, I was looking back, but we, we had... Like how we drive, how you drive, all the way on the other side. But you know, so I ain't want to just shoot back. So the shots, all the shots that you fired, were the ones we saw right here uh, with Dolph. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and Justin too. Yeah. All right. So y'all didn't shoot back at Marcus as y'all were nah, driving. Shoot back at him. You uh, say you got shot in the shoulder. And then he also talks about how Justin gets grazed. We'll talk about some of the wound cleanup. They talk about how they cleaned the car off um, and then how they switched cars from that white Mercedes to a white Expedition. More on that later as well. But the only video they have, they also have video of this white Expedition pulling into this apartment complex and two young men getting out that look a lot like Justin and Cornelius going into this house. Um, and this is where they say the wound care took place. They changed their clothes. Um, and let's just uh, take a look here. All this video, because again, it's one thing if you have kind of a, a bad dude as your star witness and all he's doing is testifying and the defense can call him a liar. And it's like, yeah, it's another thing when you got multiple videos backing up exactly what he's saying and he's explaining what you're seeing in the video and it all lines up. Timeline, dates, places, all with exactly what he's saying. Switching of the cars, etc. cetera. Is that the white expedition? Yeah, it is the white expedition. Who's driving it? I'm driving. This woman that we had seen earlier that lost back, is that Justin's cousin? Yeah, it is. It's Justin's cousin's house. Justin's cousin's there. Can you stop it here. Driver just got out. Who's that? It's me. You got your shirt all messed up, don't you? Yeah. Why is that? Sh I'm bleeding. I'm shot. In the shoulder? Yeah. Go ahead. So I don't see any blood, but maybe it's under the darker shirt. 
But again, he does definitely has the shirt up now and it's kind of his arm. It looks like almost in a sling. Don't know why he would drive if he was the one that got shot worse, but that's what he's explaining. Um, why the clothes are different again. We're going to see Justin, allegedly Justin, same hat, same clothes. That's important as we continue through other videos and other pictures we're going to see. And we saw somebody get out of the passenger side. Is that right? Yeah, it did, Jason. All right, I'll play a little further. Grace. Same outfit, all the way down to same shoes. Our pants, black hoodie, and that hat we saw is Justin. Is that correct? Correct. Same outfits that y'all were wearing during the murder. Correct. And then um, there's another video. Oh, this is Justin coming. So this is allegedly Justin coming from the house to this car that just pulled in. And uh, he basically sticks his head in the car. And again, you can see same pants and same shoes, at least. Now, no hat, no nothing blocking his face. Looks like Justin to me. Um, they probably have a better view in the courtroom. He gets what Cornelia Smith says is the wound care for them to um, treat the gunshot wounds that they both have at this point. Um, they talk about how they had no beef with Dolph, didn't know him. It was just about the money says he didn't end up getting the money. He only got $800 from Justin, basically. Um, and then at the end of his direct, they go through a bunch more uh, pictures and videos. And specifically, they're showing things like, so this is a house. And this is the white Mercedes stashed at the house. That's the white Mercedes they used that they cleaned off with like bleach. And then this is a picture of Justin, the defendant, in a music video, and that's the same house in the background of his music of his music video. And the state kept saying it's 2021, 2021. We have all this evidence now, and technology really helps us. And so he identifies Justin. Then there's a picture very clearly of Justin wearing the exact outfit of the shooting all the way down to the shoes. That's not good. This is what we call objective evidence of uh, backing up the testimony of this defendant who flipped. And the most important thing he can do is identify Justin in the video because if you can identify Justin and prove it's Justin in the video, we see what he does. We literally see him commit the crime. So did he do enough? Did the state produce enough? Frankly, if they had no other evidence, basically, they got to prove he passed and all sorts of technical things. But if they had nothing else, would this be enough for you to say that, in fact, Justin Johnson was the guy in the video who committed this crime? This is what a star witness potentially looks like, even if they're not a good person or a credible person overall to a jury that doesn't know them. He might be a good guy now. He could have turned his life around. But generally speaking, there's a lot of baggage with this witness that will make the jury maybe think twice about giving him the same credence when it is their job based on has he lied before his background? Is he a credible witness? They have to judge that credibility. That's a jury instruction. So even with an uphill battle there, if this is how the evidence is presented, how would you view it? Well, before we make our final decision, let's give the defense a chance to cross-examine him. Um, he admits to lying to law enforcement about the video at first. And, uh, the defense lawyer tries to start saying, you know, he got paid to change his testimony basically. And in a couple of these little sparring sessions back and forth, you'll get a feel for exactly how contentious this cross-examination was. But, but, but remember here, pretty decent direct, pretty good evidence against your client. So how do you attack it as a defense attorney? Yeah, oh, so hold on just a second. Ask your question, wait for a response. Your name. The original lawyer of your case got $50,000 to represent you. Did he not? I don't know exactly how much you get. I don't know. So the, the defense attorney is trying to say the original lawyer got 50 grand. You ain't got 50 grand. So how'd that original lawyer get paid? And he's going to dig into the fact that it wasn't just 800 bucks and he made it sound like the 800 bucks came from Justin. It's like, no, no, no. Okay. All right. And you knew that this we're all clear here. That money came from CMG. 
Right? So CMG is one of the record labels involved that potentially has it out for Justin, according to the defense, that allegedly has it out for Dolph, according to the defense, put the hit out. They paid 50 grand to this guy's lawyer. Defense doing the best they can to connect some dots onto why they're pinning it on Justin. They want to take Dolph's life. Now they want to take Justin's life. All right. So you talked today. You got paid for what you just testified to. Didn't you? I bailed a lot of You got paid. Right? My lawyer was paid. My lawyer. You got $50,000 pay a lawyer. So again, he's trying to say he only got 800 bucks. This lawyer's like, no, 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 you got paid. And the witness is like, well, after I got locked up, he's like, he's like, the lawyer got paid. I didn't get paid. It's like, it's not how it works. You pay your lawyer, but you didn't pay your lawyer, right? Somebody else did. So that's giving you money to pay your lawyer. Right. I didn't get any. You got $50,000 to pay a lawyer. Right. I didn't get in my hand. I don't know how much it was, but great. I'm going to pay. Okay. And there's no question that that money was for services rendered. Killing dog. Basement. Basement. You took it, didn't you? Yeah. Did your conscience bother you? you might. Your I, conscience. After I came to my senses, yeah. Did you say, I can't have that money. I can't use that money because you still got a lawyer here. No, I ain't say that. Ain't say you took that. the money. Yeah, I took the money. I got the money. Your conscience wasn't bothering you that bad, right? You said your conscience started bothering you, but not bad enough not to take the money for the job you did. Well, I had already did it, so might as well. You know, I got a conscience still. That they came to my sins. Right. Okay. Come again? He's like, oh, I just want to do what's right, blah, blah. He's like, but you took the money. He's like, well, I already did it, so I should get paid for what I did, right? Again, this guy is not going to be likable to the jury, which is why some prosecutors try to buddy up. You've changed. You're trying to do the right thing now. We've even seen that in some trials. That's not what this prosecutor did. This prosecutor's like, you're a bad dude. You did bad things. You probably would have done more bad things if you didn't get caught. Now you're just here telling us about some of the bad things you did with Justin. So that's why it was the correct strategic move, in my opinion, how the prosecutor handled this witness because this lawyer is destroying his credibility, making him look like a bad guy. Does that mean he's lying though? So he took the money, barf, like, like despicable. But does that mean he's lying? So. So that's all for that point. Um, he focuses on a lot of what he's testifying to is what this witness got from other people and not um, he himself saw or heard. Um, we'll listen to some of the inconsistencies he, he brings up. Tell them they've asked you every question under the sun about this case, right? I say detectives. I never, I never admitted that I was involved to detectives when I first got locked up December 9th. You know they take notes. They recorded your entire interview. Right. From August. All right. Why didn't you tell them in August you wiped the car down? Because we were talking about some money. You know, we should have my math us. And they specifically asked you, and you said. They ain't asking you that way you cutting in. They specifically you, you don't. You don't recall them asking you and you saying, Justin said he had someone wipe the car down. Yeah, he told me he had somebody to wipe the car down too. But you so didn't think to ask him, I right? told him, yeah, I wiped it down. He said he used the right stuff because I got somebody else to wipe it down. You know what I'm saying? So now you're saying you... So again, this is a point now. Some of the points are good. Some of them are like, uh, not so sure this helps you. Sometimes defense lawyers think certain inconsistencies are so important and really crushing a witness. Other ones are like, you said Justin told you somebody wiped it down. Now you're saying you guys wiped it down. It's like, well, who wiped it down? It's like, well, we both, we wiped it down. And Justin said somebody wiped it down. But some of it is like dealing with what are the inconsistencies that important? Do the inconsistencies actually mean somebody was not telling the truth? You told Justin that you went and wiped it down. Yeah, I told him too. Why didn't you tell that to law enforcement who's seeking the truth from you, right? 
stuff to give a person mind too. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of important detail. Like they ain't educated me the other way because they don't. So you don't think so? I don't recall. Okay. Well, your fingerprints are on that car. Correct. Right. Correct. So when did you go do that? And a couple different times during a testimony, he asked about specific details, which do sound a little sus. Like, did you really wipe it down this way? Did you wipe it down that way? How does this really work to try to make it seem like he's making up some of these details? But again, from my perspective, I'd be like, sure, this guy knows all the details, but it was with somebody else, not with Justin. If that's the story, of course, that this defense attorney believes when talking to his client, but to act like he doesn't know because he wasn't there is like, eh. But I think what he's trying to do is explain this guy doesn't actually know how none of Justin's fingerprints are on anything. He and the state pushed that and tried to come up with reasons. And he's doing this to try to get something from the state. He's doing this and trying to point the finger at Justin to get the 50 grand from this record label. He's doing it now to get a deal from the state. Cause if he can point the finger at Justin, if he can get them, their other person, get everybody convicted, then he comes out ahead in all these different areas. So he was stretching to try to find reasons to fill all the holes in the, in the state's case, like, Justin's fingerprints not being there. Did you tell Quet? Did you go by Quet's house? Yeah, I ain't called Quet and told him that, that I was going to walk in the backyard so he didn't know who walking over there. I ain't called him. So you called him. You let him know. He, you walked through his backyard. Not, not through his backyard. That I was going to walk in the backyard where the car was in. Okay. Why would you need to tell Quet you were going to be at the car across the street? Because he got killed. So I ain't want to think nobody trying to get him or nothing to get shooting at me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I ain't let him know what's up. And just to be clear, does he have cameras on the abandoned house? Or you're just saying shooting out from his, like, facing out from his house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you, testimony today is you called Quet and told him you were going to go over there and wipe that car down. Okay. And... You didn't tell law enforcement that either. Nah. Does that surprise you that you wouldn't have told them, hey, I even called Quet and told them I was going to go over and do it? Nah, because, you know, like I say, stuff slip a person mad at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, when law enforcement talking to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't JP and remember everything bit for bit right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, three or four times, as, as you said it, right? To meet with them, to go over it, to think about it. You were able to talk with counsel before you went into this. You were able to look at paperwork before you went in, right? So I went in with And met with it. Yeah, what, what you mean, though? What you saying? Like, what, what you saying? It just slipped your mind. Now, what, what you saying? Like, no, what slipped my mind? What, what you saying? To tell them all the details. Yeah, I couldn't just remember detail, detail like that. Because it's hard to keep up with details when you're lying. You would agree with that, right? Nah, no, no, nah, when you tell the truth, like, in your okay, it's like it's hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. Lawyers, like, it's hard to keep track of the details when you're lying. It's a good little punch there, as the guy is saying. I can't remember all these details, but again, this is another one that defense lawyers always do in situations like this. And I want to hear from you guys in the comments how effective you think it is because you know the bias that the state's going to give you a deal for testifying. Does that mean a witness is lying, or does that almost add credibility where it's like, listen, I'm cooked. So I might as well flip on him to try to get a lesser sentence. Like people know that exists. Jurors know that exists. So on one hand, the defense attorneys are like, sure, you're getting a deal. Of course, you're doing this for your, for your deal to get out of prison earlier to flip on him. And of course, the witness and the prosecutor would be like, no promises were made only if you tell the truth. But at the end of the day, even if you believe there's a deal locked and loaded that this guy is going to get some kind of deal or time off of his prison sentence for coming and testifying against his co-defendant, does that make you think he's lying? Now, I would say at best he's stretching or trying to fill holes or maybe trying to help him out. He's got no conscience. He doesn't care. He even said that. He's just about the money. He's about himself. He took the money even after the fact for doing this horrible deed. He felt nothing when he was pulling the trigger. He said all that. So sure, he's probably willing to lie, but is he lying? Let's kind of hear the exchange here about this. Today, no promises were made, right? All right. But you're expecting to get consideration. No. No. 
You're not expecting to get any consideration for your sentence in this case, based on what you're doing here today. But I know I'm going to jail anyway, so... Okay. So, like, I know I'm going to jail anyway. Get it up on chance for Start my He's trying to do what's right. Start his healing process. I'm not sure they believe that, but maybe it's true. I hope it is. It's not what you told your sisters when you wrote them back in March 22. Like, oh, really? You don't think you're going to get any deals? It's not what you told your sisters. And now he's got some correspondence between he and his sisters. I don't know if it's jail calls or letters or what. You lied to him? He's like, is that what you told your sisters? Probably not. He's like, I'm assuming if you're asking me, sir, that I didn't say the same thing. I say anything. I, like, I don't know. Now we're getting somewhere. You'd say anything. Like in the letters because I know for sure they, they taking my letters. And the extra comments like, now we're getting somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. You see object to in case like Karen Reed and the judge shuts them down. Lots of lawyers do it, especially in cross, especially when it's a star witness, especially when your whole case hinges on this. But he's like, you would say anything, wouldn't you, sir? Now we're getting somewhere. Still, so. You told them my lawyer is trying to tell me my best out is working with the feds, helping them something I've never done in my life. Yeah. So you're, you're telling them I didn't do this. I didn't really do it. But I'm going to say I did it so I can get out of prison. Nah, nah, I ain't saying it like that. I ain't saying it like that. Like, I'm saying, like, it's my best out to be honest and stuff like that. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, be truthful because they already know. So if they already know, why play with these folks? They already know. And then you said, just so on that point, your lawyer, he, Said that's the only way I will not do life in jail. Yeah, if I see it then, you know, it probably, you know, what I see, if I wrote it, I see it okay. I ain't gonna say I didn't write it. And then you say that you're hoping essentially not to do any time because your lawyer that you have now was responsible for getting the one of the people in the Holly Bobo case out without doing any jail time. Yeah, I told him the history, you know what I'm saying? Like, this history, but what he did in the past ain't got nothing to do with it. No? So you weren't expecting to walk free after today? That's not what you were expecting? After them folks kept telling me I ain't going, I said, forget it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it is what it is. I'm, I'm being real. So, it is what it is. I, I feel better than you. Okay. Because you told your sisters, they got to let me walk free if I make any deals with them. And my sister and they green, they don't know nothing about no, like, no folks, teachers and stuff like that. They green, they don't know nothing about no, no jail time and nothing like that. So, sisters are green. They don't understand this. You know, we just praying, hoping for the best, the best outcome. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just leave in God's hand. It's like, we're just hoping for the best, which again, if there wasn't a video, if there wasn't all these pictures, if they wouldn't be able to identify Justin Johnson from his clothes, from his shoes, from his face and some of the videos, then sure, I think this cross-examination would have been more effective. And I think he did a good job with what he had as far as the defense lawyer goes, but he didn't talk about the ID. He didn't talk about the video. He didn't talk about whether or not it was Justin Johnson. He didn't talk about almost any of that. He focused on this guy's not credible. He lied before. He's a bad guy. Don't believe him. He's making deals with everybody. And he's taking the money for doing the deed. The state got up and basically on redirect said, we didn't promise you anything. Correct? And they say correct. And so I think that was the most important witness in day one. And I really want to know what you guys think about his credibility. As far as day two goes, a uh, law enforcement officer who was on the case is now retired, took up the vast majority of the day. And his testimony kind of reminded me of the Charlie Adelson prosecution, how they methodically went through uh, CCTV videos, pictures, pointing out the shoes, pointing out the timestamps, 
the Mercedes going in a parking garage, the expedition, the white expedition coming out at the right time. Uh, Justin going into an elevator, wearing the same clothes with, I believe it's his daughter in the video, getting onto an elevator, um, Cornelius and him basically looking like they're packing things up, ready to go with their bags, all on these security camera or internal videos or external videos of different businesses and different buildings and methodically going through, lining it all up. Looks like Justin wearing the same clothes as the video. Cause like I said, the most important thing is IDing the defendant in the video uh, as the person pulling the trigger with the firearm in his hand. And the way they did that is with all sorts of other pictures, music videos, uh, CCTV video or internal video for different businesses, um, videos in parking garages, driving the cars in question, the cars parked at spots that they've seen in other videos and really connecting all those dots. Now on cross, once again, I think the defense attorney did about as good as he could do with what he has. And as we see in most of these cases, pointing out that you didn't get this video from across the street. You didn't test this. You didn't do that. There's more that could have led you to who really did it, but you didn't do it. You just focused in on Justin. Um, obviously, I mean, the jury's going to see in here that the co-defendant flipped. So that kind of helped the investigation point the finger at Justin. It wasn't just law enforcement, but a negligent investigation is kind of what he was hoping to point at. But I thought the best evidence or the best hole poked in the defense in the uh, prosecution's case from the defense brought out here with this uh, officer was when you tested the car, you it's not that you didn't find any fingerprints from the cleaning of the car that we've heard so much about. You did find fingerprints. You found Cornelius Smith's fingerprints. You found two other gentlemen's fingerprints, one of whom were we've also heard from in day two of the trial who testified that he basically knew Justin was going to use the Mercedes for something. He didn't know what it was. It wasn't involved in this conspiracy like Dolph. I think he said that was his family. Never would have done this. Never would have taken part in it. Didn't even know the car was stolen, but maybe he kind of did. That's what the defense did to impeach that witness. Of course, not credible lied before, et cetera, et cetera. He was also in custody. Um, but while there were three male fingerprints or DNA on the car, guess whose fingerprints were not there the defendant, a man sitting in the chair on here for on trial here today. To me, that's pretty good evidence. Maybe somebody else was in the car. Maybe it was the other guy we heard from. I think Gardner, I can't remember his last name. Maybe it was him with Cornelius and Cornelius is trying to protect him. And maybe it wasn't the man sitting in that chair over there that everybody's identifying as the defendant saying did it. Maybe he just happened to be in that in the building and in the elevators at those times. Maybe he just happened to be packing his bag for a trip. I think it's the best hole they could poke. Um, on redirect with that officer, the state came up and said, you retired and more testing, more work, more investigation was done after. Is that, is that fair? And the officer was like, yeah, that's fair. So maybe we're going to hear more. I would expect we're going to hear more about what they did, filling some of those gaps, filling some of those holes. Maybe they have a way to talk about the fingerprints more. Um, and the testing more, because again, I don't know what's coming out. I don't know anything about this case until we watch it together in trial. So if you guys want me to keep following this case, if you guys are interested in maybe daily recaps or a recap every couple of days, please let me know in the comments and let me know by liking this video. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments, or if you want to do a live, a live recap of this case where we can sit there, watch some clips. I can answer some questions for us together. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the reminder bell so you can be there for those future lives. But for now, that's all we got. Until next time, I am out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out the Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, the Lawyer You Know.